we sure we're ready? All right. Okay, we'll go ahead and get uh, the Solano 360 Implementation Committee meeting started. Um, call the meeting to order. And Madam Clerk, do we have any public comment? No, ma'am, I received no public comment uh, submitted and I have no public comment cards. Okay, do wonderful. Like to do roll call? Please do. Yes, ma'am. Supervisor Spearing? Here. Council Member Dew? Here. Mayor McConnell? Present. And Chair Hannigan? Present. We ought to work that. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, uh, so for our members here, if I can receive an approval of the attached minutes from the September 10th, 2021 uh, Solano 360 Implementation Committee meeting. Do we have a motion? Okay, so motion by Mayor McConnell, seconded by Supervisor Sparing. Um, any dissension to this motion? Seeing none, motion passes. Is that okay, or do you want to do a roll call? Your choice. I think we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we'll move on to item number three, the overview of the market conditions supporting the industrial realty group at the Solano Fairgrounds Plan 2. And it's... Just it's briefly, a uh, Chair... Uh, uh, Supervisor Hannigan, this is Nancy Houston, Assistant County Administrator. I just want to formally introduce again Mike Lindenlaub as well as Stuart Lichter. They both represent Industrial Realty Group, our master developer for the site on the fairgrounds. And so they're here today to bring back an item that was requested by, I believe, Councilmember Dew, ask about sort of the overview of the, of the sort of what's going on in the world in the market on the, on the uses. And so they're here to provide a PowerPoint presentation on that item. And so with that, uh, Mike and Justin, thank you. Just for a techn technology question, can we see it on our screens or no? We'd have to look up at the top. You probably can. I, I don't believe that um, Mayor McConnell and Council Member do. Okay. No worries. Go ahead, team. Yeah. Well, that's we fine. have two. We also have paper, but we usually have it here on the screen as well. It's, making some pretty good progress, I would say, and uh, remain uh, as excited as ever um, uh, about the project. Um, the, I think the last time we were together, I believe, um, Council Member Dew, you had asked for, a, you mentioned a market uh, report. And so today I, I want to, to go over sort of the market highlights, if you will. So this, I don't want this to be expected to be some kind of comprehensive market survey. It is not. But what it is, is it, um, uh, it's data that informs um, uh, our development plans uh, for the site. And so I, I wanted to sort of take the opportunity to share with you some of our thoughts in that regard. Um, we're going we're gonna to say next today? Great. Thanks. So we, we explored pretty much most different product types. Uh, the key product types are multifamily, single-family residential, industrial, retail, office, and hospitality. And these are the major asset categories. So when you see something like single family residential or industrial, you have to think about what that includes. And even though we wouldn't contemplate single family residential, understanding that product type and what's happening in the world of single family residential, you know, helps inform us on say the multifamily side or what's, what is going on with population and families. And so we look at those asset classes and it helps us as we develop uh, our plan uh, for Solano. So uh, just before we move on to a whole bunch of slides with a whole bunch of numbers and statistics that aren't gonna mean much to anybody in, a, in sort of a, a vacuum, I wanna put it into some context for you. Let's think about the site, right, and the development potential for the site. And maybe don't think about it so much in terms of a real estate development potential, but think of it as sort of a community economic development opportunity. What can we do on this terrific site that's going to benefit not only the site, right? But then let's start kind of opening the circle. The city of Alejo, the county of Solano, the North Bay, Northern California, California, and the United States, and say the US, yeah. What can we do locally that's going to be a benefit in more than just our local location? And so if we think about it in those terms, I think it'll help us 
as we start to look at a whole bunch of numbers that aren't going to aren't going to be much. But again, it's those numbers that are going to help us strategize our development uh, and create something um, that we think is going to be very special for the site and it's going to benefit uh, all of those jurisdictions that I just mentioned. So think about it in those terms, right? Um, and then think about it in terms of how we can work together, the developer, the county, the city, the community. What can we do as partners? Think about it in those terms. Don't think about it so much as the developer is going to come in and take this piece of land and build buildings and they're going to make money. If you do that, we're going to spend a lot of time on statistics and we'll be here for a while and again, it won't mean much. So think about it in terms of what can you do to help us create something that's going to be an economic stimulus, a community stimulus for Vallejo and for this site and for this region. If we think about it in those terms, I think some of these numbers will begin to make sense. So now it's on to the boring numbers. Next, please. Um, so you know, we are in constant contact with all different uh, uh, people that can help us uh, understand this market. And we've spoken to 22 brokers. I think that number has increased since I, I wrote this. Uh, representing most major brokerage houses, 20 unique market studies. Um, uh, we have reached out to independent tenants and, uh, and user outreach. So not only are we speaking to the brokerage community, but we're literally and we're actually calling and speaking to some of the end users, uh, understanding what their requirements would be, understanding what their motivations to, would be to be on this site and in this location. So sometimes it's not as easy as just going to the brokerage houses. You need to go out and you need to uh, do outreach directly to who the users would be. And we'll speak more about that as we speak about the retail, for example, and the studio space and some of these other users. Uh, and then we've uh, reached out to and, and, uh, and we're in contact with most of the major hotel brands. And so from the hotel perspective, we're, we're constantly understanding not only sort of more globally what's happening in the world of hotels and hospitality, um, you know, but how that relates to the opportunities here locally. Next, please. So this, this is in order of how we think the site um, um, is, is, you know, it is not only activated, but uh, will bring sort of notoriety to the site and, and activity to the site. So the last time that we spoke, I, I spoke about site activators. And multifamily was not one of those site activators. But I put it first for a, a, the reason that I want to demonstrate to you what is happening with the population and the populace in this area. And I think that that will help us as we speak about uh, some of these other product types. Next, please. And just if you can go back one second. Um, take note of some of these images as we begin to speak about each of the individual product types, because that'll give you a sense of what we're talking about. Because we might say multifamily, but in your mind, you'll be thinking about an apartment block. The lower left-hand picture is an image of, of townhomes, and so it could be product like that. When we speak about some of the other product types, you'll have a better sense of what we're talking about from a visual perspective. Next, please. So um, I wanted to kind of just take a look at what the single family home market was like. And this gives you an idea that you can get a three bedroom, two bath home in the city of Alejo uh, for 545,000. And you can look at some of the other nearby markets. It's, it's more expensive than that in American Canyon, which is further to the north, arguably not as uh, convenient to uh, uh, areas south of Alejo and Benicio, 786,000. Next, please. Uh, Fairfield, 555. This just gives you a sense of where we're at in terms of single family home values. Next, please. This is an important slide. The lower left talks about uh, the cost, uh, monthly housing cost for a median home price. And in the county of Solano for 2021, it's $2,630. And that includes principal interest, taxes, and insurance. So that's what it costs to pay for a house, right? Keep that number in mind as we then go and we speak about what it costs to live in an apartment or a multifamily complex. And you can see that we're the lowest in all of the northern counties. Uh, and compared to the United States, we're, we, we, because we're California, we are higher than, uh, than the average for the US. Next, please. Uh, this is, doesn't mean much. This is just the uh, appreciation in single family home values. Uh, and it is, again, the lowest on the chart at 96,000 over the median home price. Next, please. Uh, we looked at our arena numbers, our regional housing needs allocation. So the city of Solano, I'm sorry, the county of Solano between 2023 and 2031 needs 11,000 units. City of Alejo needs 2,900 of those. And the breakdown is as you see it. 
we need about 1,200 units above moderate, low, and very low income housing. Next, please. Um, so this begins now to speak about the numbers. If you look at the city of Vallejo and Fairfield, 14,000 total units, the effective monthly growth is $1,800 a unit. Um, next, please. And you can see that from apartments.com, a three bedroom is 2,400 uh, a month and 2,100 for two bedrooms. Next, please. I'm sorry, go back one slide. Okay, so with those numbers in mind, here's what is important about those numbers. That those numbers are still too low for us to build anything that is going to heavily impact those numbers at the moment, right? It's too competitive to buy a single family home and the cost of construction is still a little bit too high to justify given the low rate of rentals in the marketplace, right? So we need to think about ways that we can activate the site, encourage populace to come to the site so that we can drive those numbers up. And I was looking at an interesting statistic that of the nine counties, the Bay Area counties, there are 7.7 .7 million people in those counties, right? Just to the south of us, Alameda and Contra Costa counties, which is just over a waterway and a bridge, there's three million people. And yet there's 450,000 people in the county of Solano. So if you think about it, like what's going on, right? They come up to the water, they stop. We're just as beautiful. We have the same great weather. Everything about this area is, is arguably just as beneficial from a lifestyle point of view as those areas to the south of us. So this area can't help but be an opportunity from all that population coming south. It ultimately will be a valuable place to live and work and raise a family, right? So, so that is the opportunity that if we look at this slide right now and these numbers right now, if you compare it to the cost of living in single family homes, which by the way is a benefit. California has a, a, a net exodus of people, but the city of Vallejo, county of Solano, um, uh, people are actually not moving out as much and they're actually moving in. So, um, and I think of the 25 top cities in the United States, four of those cities are in California for people actually moving in. So it's not so much that people want to move out of California, it's that they're looking for an affordable way to live in California. And Vallejo, with its incredible location, offers that, right? We're just over a bridge from three million people. So you have to think about it in terms of what can we do as a partnership to benefit the site, benefit the city, benefit the county that is going to make people say that is a great place to live. That's where I want to live. And then give them the opportunity to do that. So that's, um, you know, that kind of drives our thinking in terms of how we develop a strategy for the site, how we develop, when we develop, um, you know, uh, what comes first, and how we drive those numbers up. And so strategically, so that we can attract this kind of product type, we need to create a benefit and a reason that people are going to want to come to the site uh, and, and to the city, frankly. So if we can create jobs, if we can create um, a sense of place, and all of those other things that are covered in the specific plan, those, uh, I think, seven uh, key qualities of the specific plan, we know that Vallejo is going to be an attractive place to live, work, and play. And uh, no better place that the center of this should be than on the site. Next, please. So we get in now into the different product types. So uh, I want to talk about industrial. and. Um, Justin said to me, you shouldn't have put the word industrial, and he's right. So, but as a category class, it covers things like the mercantile space, the maker space, and what we call PDR, which is the production design and repair. And if you've ever been up to the Barlow in Sebastopol, that gives you a sense of what we're talking about, okay? Or uh, I think we've talked about Tin City down in Paso Robles. Uh, that's kind of what we're thinking about. And we're gonna speak about retail, which we put after this component and we're going to wrap it all up in terms of, of, of what we're thinking and why we think strategically that's a great product type. And again, let's look at the imagery in terms of, of kind of what we're thinking. Next, please. Again, a lot of numbers. Um, but you can see that Solano County, average total asking price is 59 cents a square foot. Um, and we've got about 37 million square feet of, of just basic industrial space. But what, but, but what that doesn't really consider is what kind of space is that, um, you know, and, uh, you know, what is, what are, what is the purpose of, of most of that space? Next, please. So for all of those, those uh, locations, 
um, here's a key point, that the, the net absorption is 1.4 million square feet with 2.4 million square feet in, under construction with a total vacancy rate of 3.8%. So the good news is that that is a great number in terms of total vacancy. The, the demand for this kind of space is on, is on the up, upturn. I mean, it's just very strong, right? Um, this drives jobs. It drives opportunity. And again, if we look areas to the north of us, Napa, uh, Sonoma, those areas are kind of boutique industrial areas serving a very specific purpose. Uh, those square footage numbers are much higher than they are in Solano. Fairfield is even higher than Solano. And then, of course, if you get into the East Bay, south of Vallejo, those numbers are much higher. So if you think about it, it, it it's, it's all coming towards us, which gives us the opportunity to curate what that industrial is. And that's why we come back to the makerspace to say, all right, there's a need for food and beverage type industrial use that we spoke about before with our makerspace. More of the boutique use. All of those opportunities I think will benefit the site because you can't afford to go south of us. Going north of us is not as convenient. So that really sort of lends itself to opportunities on site. So the key component here is that you know, we have a low vacancy rate, with not a lot of uh, construction, new construction in the area, uh, and an opportunity to use this product type to get those businesses into, into the area. Uh, and again, the direct action price is 83 cents a square foot. And just to give you a sense of, of the Marin and Sonoma market, it's up to $1.24 a square foot. And then the East Bay, which in, it was, it's about $1 a square foot. But you know, that, that, there's a huge range uh, uh, on the East Bay. What happens when uh, the industrial market is so hot is that most of the industrial builders aren't building this type of product for the makerspace. They're focusing on the big box because it's cheaper to build on a per square foot basis. So there's a, a great potential to tap into that need and bring that activity to the site. Next, please. And this just isolates that number. Next, please. Uh, and this is just more industrial statistics for uh, the East Bay. So this, is, this includes Oakland and Berkeley and uh, areas south of Vallejo. And that absorption, 533,000 uh, square feet. And the direct asking price is 97 square feet, 97 cents a square foot. So again, that number, if you, if you were to study the chart to the left, you'd see that you know, uh, we're up around a dollar a square foot and higher for some of those areas in the, in the East Bay. So the reason that we show that, we show the East Bay, we show the North Bay, we show areas to the east of us is because you have to look at all of those, those costs per square foot. You have to look at the absorption and the demand for those spaces that are not in our area and see what our potential is coming into us. Because there's not a lot of, of, of uh, existing um, project, uh, product here in, uh, in Vallejo. And there's not a lot slated, at least at the moment. So what is our opportunity moving forward? Next. This is like we've talked about this as kind of the hole in the donut for a lot of these product types. But so it's um, trying to figure out what's around and then converting that, but there's really no true comps. So Yeah, that's right. In fact, I uh, if you if you when you when you look at the comps, right, what you get back is you get a lot of sort of um, earmarks all around the city of Vallejo, right? But nothing really that comps directly within the city of Vallejo. So it's a little bit tough. You know, it's our job to say what's going to come to us, what are our, our impediments um, uh, to get that product in this area to take advantage of, uh, of those opportunities. This I thought was interesting from JLL. The North Bay is now dealing with the same market pressures the East Bay and Silicon Valley faced three years ago, enticing tenants with more affordable rents and newer big box space. However, with sub 4% vacancy and demand pushing rents, unless new space is made available, tenants may be driven into tertiary markets like Sacramento or Central Valley. So we don't want to let that happen. And again, we're not so interested in the big box, but we want to curate those opportunities that we can pick and choose the kind of, of, uh, of users that we want for our maker space. So, so the timing on this product is good. I mean, this is something that we think is, is, uh, is, a, is a hot product. It's something that we called a site activator, along with, I think, the studio space and, um, and some of the, the neighborhood retail, uh, as something that we feel like is in demand, that we uh, are anxious to get going on sooner rather than later. And we feel like this is where we're going to attract you know, the tendency to get the site going. 
Next, please. Uh, retail. So um, you think about it in, in, in really three ways, if you will. So there's the neighborhood retail, which is you know the sprouts, uh, the pharmacies, that kind of thing, the, the necessary neighborhood um, uh, retail uh, providers. Then there's what we call the entertainment type, you know, with the yard house, uh, the movie theaters, and the like. And then there's the lifestyle retail, which is REI, Bass Pro Shops, arguably even Apple stores, and things like that. Uh, but the third uh, type of retail is our maker retail, right? Which we don't mention and which we don't carry as part of the retail, but which we feel like is going to spark the interest in this more traditional type of retail. One of the things that we like about it is that it gives the user the opportunity to uh, have a retail uh, outlet in a space that they can actually make the goods, right, and distribute the goods. So, uh, and we're gonna speak about some of those trends in just a moment, next please. So the retail trends are threefold. Omnichannel, that's this term of art now in the retail industry which says that you have to have multiple outlets, right? Catalogs, telephone are sort of the legacy ways of selling things. Uh, bricks and mortar coming in is what we thought of as sort of the past, right? And of course, online shopping is what we're all used to. Except that Omnichannel is saying that really, you kind of need a little bit of all of that. And what we're finding now is that a lot of these more retail out, these retail outlets are made popular online, and now they're opening bricks and mortar. So that you can go in and you can try the stuff on, you can figure it out, you know, uh, fit your, your shirt size, your, your shoe size, and then from then on you can order online. And then you return something, it's so convenient to go and drop it off at, uh, at a brick and mortar store. And so you see a lot of these online retailers actually opening brick and mortar stores now. And they're also looking for easy, quick, and efficient uh, last mile distribution. If they can get it to you the same day, that's great. So omnichannel is something that's important. Flexible, make, sell, and distribute. So forget about the national brands, all of these more bespoke, smaller businesses know that they need to sell online, omni-channel, right? But they need a place that's affordable for their brick and mortar, also that they can, can uh, uh, create the product and distribute the product. So it's a heck of a retail opportunity for somebody to say, you can make your stuff here, but what we're going to ask you to do is show people how you're making it and have a little bit of a retail distribution. So people can come in and try something on. You're not a big retailer, I mean, not a national retailer, but you have this opportunity. So we look at that in terms of equity. We look at that in terms of jobs. We look at that in terms of a, an ability to open up a retail um, uh, distribution, right? Uh, but also fill that maker space uh, and, and create that kind of retail uh, opportunity. And again, if you recall from last time, we envisioned this thing around sort of a maker village, which then sort of you know, uh, creates these, uh, these opportunities. The nice thing about that is that you begin to see some of these more local uh, manufacturers and makers of things, whether it's food and beverage or a product. Uh, these are things that you can't really get everywhere, and that's what is so special about it. So if you begin to think about the retail opportunity mixed with that sort of maker industrial opportunity, you can kind of envision why we think that's a, a, a site activator. Next, please. To add to that, a lot of these groups do classes and other you know, experiential um, activities inside the space so that the community can come in and learn how to brew beer or learn how to, you know, design or, or make a bike or something like that also. So it's, uh, it's pretty engaging. Yeah. Um, you know, the, these slides are here so that we can understand where the, where the market is, right? But it, it almost doesn't mean that much to us in the context of a traditional retail facility. Uh, you know, so the average asking rent in, in, uh, in Solano County is uh, 1788 a square foot. But that doesn't work for us because 1788 a square foot isn't gonna justify the, any kind of return on what it would cost to build uh, from a construction point of view, from an infrastructure point of view, right? So, so why, you know, how do we think about this? Well, if there's demand on the site, you can bet that the likes of Sprouts are gonna wanna be on the site, right? You can bet that Apple Computer or whoever it is is gonna wanna be on the site. So it, that's, we can put that there because we have to understand what it is, uh, but in speaking with the brokerage community, you know, 
They're all gung-ho to go out and speak to people, but they'll say to us, you've got to have a plan. You've got to give us the vision of what this plan is, how you're going to activate the site, how you're going to bring people to the site, what makes it so unique, so exciting, and then we can go out and we can speak to you know, the big users of the marketplace out there. So we see really the neighborhood retail and the entertainment and the lifestyle retail comes after when we can go to those individual users and say to them, this is a great site. We've got hundreds of thousands of people coming to the site every year. It's very exciting. You really need to be here. And then we can begin to build some of this, this space. And so that's why we feel like this comes a little bit later. We might have some of this in the first round because we're gonna, we, we need it. And if there's a user that sees the opportunity, we want them on the site. But we, we, we would almost rather wait until we can go to them and say, you know, don't miss your chance. You can see that this is a hot site. We want you here. That the housing is growing because this is an opportunity for people to have a great lifestyle. Um, and we've created this great maker village and all of this maker space. And so there's a lot of activity on the site. Next, please. Um, I, I put this in there only to kind of demonstrate that, that you can see on, the, on the, the graph to the right, sort of the breakdown, neighborhood and community represents 62% of the product type in retail. Uh, with strip centers on the, you know, down low at nine, and then the regional at 18%, and then the lifestyle at 10%. So, you know, the majority of the space, just look at, at, look at the area, right? You see a lot of that neighborhood and community services that represents the 62%. The, the power and regional centers are, are on the decline with malls going away. Um, lifestyle, 10%. I think, you know, that's one of those, sort of this experiential retail is going to be important. If you can go and learn, if you can, if you can try, if you can experience, uh, you know that's hot. That's that's what people really want. That's here to stay. And then it's just a question of who do you get, when do you get them, um, and how do you compete for that user because they might not be someplace else. Well, we argue that we have we have a great location and a great opportunity to get that lifestyle uh, component. Next, please. Office. Next, please. Uh, and, and, yeah, next please. Um, again, not a lot of office comps in the area. Um, but again, we do feel like down the road, we're gonna wish we had asked for more office space because again, keeping the jobs here in Vallejo, when this is such a great place to live with such a great lifestyle, we're going to need it. We've got sort of the manufacturing distribution maker, small business, retail jobs in our makerspace and our retail. Uh, we've got studio jobs, which we'll speak about in a moment. You know, we're gonna need the office support. It's a question of getting it right and building it right. The numbers that you see here don't justify any kind of development in the short run, but we ultimately know that as the market comes to us, that there is gonna be justification and a need for that office space. And then it's just a question of what kind of space do we build um, you know, creative space and what kind of tenancy do we attract. But um, we think that a lot of these users that we're out there speaking with um, wouldn't mind having an office component. Uh, and again, we don't want to jump too early. As much as we're out there speaking with end users, somebody might say, well, we'd love 100,000 square feet to put our back office there. Okay, that might be, might be okay, but what does it do for the site? And so we have to kind of look at those considerations um, and how it's going to help the site in the long run. Next, please. Mm -hmm. um, would one of your questions of a potential tenant be how many employees you know would you have at the site? I mean, you can have a hundred thousand square feet, and if you have um, fifty employees, you know, it, you want you want bodies on site, right? Because they're going to purchase food, they're going to yeah. participate in the activities, they're going to be probably the biggest ambassadors of the location. Yeah, that's always that's always one of our yeah. initial questions. Yeah. yeah. I know we've had some inquiries as to warehousing and you know that kind of stuff, um, data centers, and mm, doesn't get you much. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think we'd get a data center because power is too expensive, and not that we're even looking at it. But um, the you know that's one of the the advantages of the maker space is even though there is some some warehousing distribution component, they're mm -hmm. manufacturing in there, so there's people on the floor doing things. Right, right. And then they're kind of self-performing, you know, with their crew because it's a small business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, thanks. You know, this is just a slide to kind of kind of look at those numbers. What this says is that you have A and B office space, and uh, and they've, 
this survey that JLL conducted, you know, they, they combined Napa and Solana, so the numbers are a little bit skewed by virtue of what's going on in, in Napa, but there's 1.4 million square feet of Class A, you know, con what's considered to be Class A office space in those markets. And, you know, that's not a lot, right? So eventually down the road, we think that it's going to be competitive. There is going to be a need for Class A office space and institutional quality uh, real estate. Um, again, we think it's going to drive the numbers up. The numbers we feel are going to be independent from the surveys. The surveys aren't going to justify, uh, you know, if you're going to look at a comp in the area, it's not going to justify that project. But what you're going to look at is, well, what are the rates in Pleasanton and Walnut Creek, in Napa, in Berkeley, in some of those areas, those outlining areas, and then look at this as an alternative, right? Every one of those employers is going to look at the lifestyle, uh, the quality of life, the ability for the employees to buy housing and rent apartments, and see that as an opportunity to put some of these office uses in. So that's a number to keep an eye on, right? And it's there as a sort of metric that kind of informs our our, um, our thinking and our, our timing on the project. One of the, one of the outfalls from COVID is likely going to be um, more satellite offices instead of just a large headquarters downtown, just because of people working from home, keep things separate, but have a place that people can go to regionally. Yeah. Yeah. Next, please. Next, please. Um, I, I put this in there because I, I wanted to sort of point out that it is when you're speaking with the brokerage houses and, uh, and the users, you know, getting the nomenclature correctly and getting the description of what they're talking about um, is, is, it takes a little bit of effort. So, you know, what is the North Bay? What is the East Bay? Um, you know, in some cases, you'll see that sort of Vallejo falls in between, you know, and, uh, and you have to do a little bit of kind of sleuthing and, and, and to kind of figure out which, and you're going to pick up markets. So in this case, we'll look at Petaluma and, and Roner Park, and, and we'll look at, you know, uh, you know, sort of outlining areas, and you'll have to disqualify some of those areas that you just know aren't comps. So uh, there's been a little bit of that effort uh, in, in helping us uh, develop our numbers. Next, please. So again, you know, we look at Novato in this case, Petaluma, Roner Park, and we'll look at those numbers. We'll also look at everything else to see, again, you know, what's going on with the vacancy and the absorption and the exodus, right? People are moving out of San Francisco. Where are they going? Well, again, they can't afford to live in San Francisco, but all of a sudden with low interest rates and affordability, they can afford to live in Vallejo. And there's houses and there's apartments. I'd love to live there. And so we're gonna, we, we keep an eye on these metrics to help us, um, you know, just understand and, and have a clear picture of the totality of the site. Because remember, as I said, Think about this holistically. Don't think about it as sort of one component. Think about this as a community, and when do you pull the triggers on, on, those, uh, on those components? Next, please. Uh, and so, you know, we, we've, looked at the, we've looked at the west, and we've looked at the south. We also keep an eye on what's going on out to the west, and so Fairfield is $2.09 a square foot. You know, we, we feel like Class A office needs to be, it, just to be considered, needs to be north of, of $3 a square foot. So we've got a long way to go. If you look at vacancy rates uh, in the 18%, you can see that there's going to be no rush uh, to, to build that space. But then, you, but then you can say, well, OK, if we narrow down, we're also closer to the East Bay and to areas south of us. So maybe we're going to be in demand sooner than areas to the north of us. Next, please. And again, just, just looking at different, um, this is Richmond to the south of us at 254 a foot. Next, please. And that brings us to hospitality. Next, please. Um, you know, again, a lot of numbers. I'll, let me just summarize by saying this. And again, we speak to all of the hotel companies, and they all say, yeah, we, where is it? You know, it's next to six. Oh, yeah, we know that area. L as you know, lots of select service economy hotels in the area, not a lot of, you know, mid-level full-service hotels because there's no need for those hotels right now. So we, we, we know we're going to need it. We know we're going to need it eventually. Um, we'd like to do something special when the timing is right. Again, it's something we keep an eye on. We'll watch the numbers. But the, uh, it, you know, it's something that we could see down in maybe phase two or three as we activate the site and we bring some, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, some notoriety to the site. 
you know, and somebody wants to come, we get corporations that want to come and spend a weekend here or, or a couple of days, that's when it'll be time to pull the trigger on the site. So it will be an absolute necessity. The location is terrific for it. Uh, but but uh, as you can see, the numbers just don't bear it out quite yet. Next, please. I, I put this in there. This is, this is hospitality. And the number two market in terms of construction costs is San Francisco. Pretty darn close to Hawaii where, you know, and in... in, in uh, at least in the three star, it's, it's higher than Hawaii. So it costs more in San Francisco to build than it does in Hawaii and then you have to ship everything over. We're not San Francisco, you say, but not the contractors. The contractors, you know, they're giving us numbers that are closer to that San Francisco rate than they are to the Sacramento rate. So if you, and this is not only on hotels, I, I show this to you by, to give you kind of a sense of what, what's going on more globally, just in terms of construction, that there is a price premium in the Bay Area for anything that we want to construct. So in a way, it's a little bit unfair for us to look at those numbers now. Uh, by the way, we're, we're, we're not looking at the snapshot post-COVID. Post we're sort of looking at it more general, 2018, 2019, what was happening, um, to get a sense of what construction costs are. But that's how you have to run your numbers. You have to look at the, at the premium of construction costs and compare that to some of the rates that I, that I mentioned earlier. Um, and then you have to figure out when you're going to pull the trigger on this stuff. When do you build? Next, please. Uh, film studios. Next, please. So, you know, this, this one's a little tougher. You can't really go to the brokerage community. Um, you can speak to a bunch of users that are operators, right? But this is a, it's traditionally been somewhat of a fickle industry, becoming less fickle for the state of California. So the state of California took for granted that all of these studios were going to want to stay in the state of California, notably Hollywood, and not go elsewhere until other states and municipalities offered tax credits for film crews to go there. And once they set up a base, they will keep going back, right? So Atlanta, Georgia was, was one of the bases that were set up that gave great incentives. Uh, Vancouver uh, gave great incentives. California got wise to it and said, no, we want to keep that business back here. And so they have re-upped their California tax uh, credit incentive uh, to the tune of $330 million a year that runs through, I think, uh, 2025. And you can bet that they're going to re-up it uh, uh, after that. But the benefit to that is that the industry employs 700000 and about $70 billion in wages. Um, so the numbers are terrific. They want to, we want to keep the, the production here. Um, the, the studio business in, in, uh, in Southern California is just, you know, and you know it, right? Netflix and HBO and Apple, all of these new brands in that world that are producing. And like Silicon Valley, they want to be where the talent pool is. Mm -hmm. So they might be able to go to New Mexico where it's cheaper, but getting that talent pool there is tough. If they're incentivized to stay in the state of California, they'll do it. Northern California is a burgeoning base, and there's some incentives for, um, uh, for that, an additional 5% incentive for projects shot outside of, of Los Angeles. So keep it, in, uh, keep it in California, right? But we'll give you, it will give you an incentive for you to do something out of Los Angeles. And Sinhalese, which are the folks that are working on Mare Island, can tell you that they've had some success with that. And once you have some success, right, with the incentives, and the infrastructure, you're going to get more. And so uh, well, all I can tell you is we've signed a number of NDAs with a bunch of different production companies that all show tremendous interest. And what's really cool about that is when you speak to the producers and the directors, they live here. They live in Marin. They live in San Francisco, right? So if they can do their work here, we think that there's going to be – we know there's a need. And, and in fact, the need for what's happening on Mare Island and Treasure Island um, – they just don't have the facilities to be able to, uh, to keep that business here. So we think that there's an opportunity there. We think that there's an immediate opportunity there for high paying jobs, lots of jobs. Uh, we've spoke about the appeal of the film studios um, and we've spoken about that as a side activator. So, uh, so again, you know, you think about this holistically, next please. If you think about this holistically, the film studios, the maker space, activate the site, Get our infrastructure in. Those are two products that we think can uh, can get the site going. 
then start to come in with a little bit of multifamily as the numbers begin to come up. Then we can go out to the retail and we can bring in some of that lifestyle retail and some of that entertainment. And then the site begins to develop and come together. So that's a market overview. Um, you can see our challenges. Um, and, and I just would like to wrap up by saying it's been terrific working uh, with the team so far with the county and the city folks have been really, really great. And we look forward to moving forward. We have to do this as a partnership. We, we can't be the developer municipality. We've got to do this together. We need your brain power and your energy and your excitement uh, to make this happen. Thank you, Mike. Uh, that was a lot of information. <laughs> No, sorry. Got a ton of notes. No, it's fine. Um, I bet you all wished you had the little screen here because those numbers are tiny on that paper. <laughs> don't worry about them. <laughs> I really don't worry about them. Yeah. I mean, the, the gist of it is, is, you know, you have demand. Mm -hmm. I've, I've explained to you what the demand is, right? What the site activators are, why we feel like those are the products to move forward. The rest of the numbers that are going to justify, you know, how and when we pull the trigger on this development. Right. But the, but you know, we see that the demand is there for these product types at, at certain points in time. And that sets up your uh, staging in terms yeah. of what goes first and second and third. Right. And if you want to look closely and at those numbers and yes. run the numbers, yes. you can do that. Right. With these, but, but, you know, we'll do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you are the experts. Let me ask uh, the committee if anybody would like to speak on this. Supervisor Sparing. Well, thanks. Uh, thank you for the eye test. I failed it. So <laughs> <laughs> I know how you like small numbers. Yeah, yeah. I would. I would like to see those numbers yeah. bigger. So if, if staff could somehow mm -hmm. generate that, uh, the term industrial that you use is that because of financing, or why are you using that term? Oh, because when you when you go to the the market, that is the the word that's used. Mm -hmm. We don't like it as much as anybody else. But the maker space, the more boutique space, what they call PDR, which is this kind of new term of art, mercantile space, it's all covered and carried under what they call industrial. So industrial is everything from a big, ugly concrete box, mm -hmm. right, to something that is you know shown in our imagery, which is more of that boutique maker space. Yeah, I, I think it would be important that you put a definition with it because when I see that word industrial, it, I know. I see it entirely different than the way it's being presented. Yeah, and so. just, Supervisor, so you know, I, I, we didn't want to not, I can't put a word in there that isn't, you know, the market nomenclature. Oh, not, no, I, and that's yeah. why I'm asking that. That's, yeah, yeah. But I, I do think there should be some definition of, of how you see that being applied to this site. Yeah. I think that's important. And uh, how, how do you see the sequence? I mean, you seem to be talking about the housing, and so talk about the sequence of development. Um, so, so we go back to those, what we call, what we're going to call the site activators, right? So it's, it's what can we build? What's in demand? What's the, what's the best economic opportunity now, right, that we can build um, where the construction costs are the most competitive, uh, where the rate is the best rate, where it's the most attractive um, that we can begin to, to build our site plant the seeds. Maybe we start small and we can be, begin to grow. Because we know that once we, once we get some excitement in, then you can go out, to, again, to these other users. And notwithstanding the numbers that you saw, you're going to be able to drive those numbers up because there, there's some excitement on the site from these site activators. So we've always said that there are two primary site activators. One is being the maker space, right, which is the, the, the sort of maker retail component. So if you think about now the site begins to look pretty, it begins to look attractive. We have some streetscape in there. We have some landscape in there. We have a water feature in there, right? We have some activity. People want to come and kind of see what's going on. People want to come and they got to go to work and they have an opportunity with small businesses that are there now. And then we have an opportunity because those numbers are the earliest numbers that make sense from a development point of view. So we begin with that with those site activators. Now, that's what we say today, right? As we kind of move down the road, if those multifamily numbers start to swoop up, we'd be foolish not to pull the trigger on, on building some multifamily. Because now we have residents, and we have some of this maker space. We have a community that's beginning to come together. So if you ask us today, the site activators, as far as we're concerned, and the numbers that make the, the closest sense, the most sense at this moment, would be that maker space. And, and if, we, if we can get something tangible and concrete on the studios, 
Uh, that would be the second site activator. And then if you've got those, we know, and we're almost certain that we can attract uh, some neighborhood retail. Uh, and, and bring that in to, to complement those uh, those uses. Yeah, I, I just uh, would like to see a balance, and I, I just don't want to see a strong emphasis just put on the housing or the maker space that you know, we balance that development, that we don't overbuild one category in the beginning. Yeah. So I, I'd just be concerned about that. And uh, But the housing, you know, I think one lake here in Fairfield is a classic example. You know, they didn't think... You know, it's the prices and the cost of development, but they're selling everything they're building. I know. And it's just going crazy. And so that that, that part of the component, but, you know, if you decide that's where you're going to start, I, I really want to see some of the, you know, makerspace, residential commercial. There's got to be a component that goes with that, that complements it at the same time. Don't, yeah. don't oversaturate one or the other. Councilwoman Pippendu. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Hannigan. And thank you for this report. I really appreciate you guys um, diving into the market data and bringing that back to us. Um, uh, on the industrial, like, you know, it's not like heavy industrial that we're talking about. It's, it's light industrial. I understand that um, nomenclature and you know, term as a realtor. I understand that from the industry. Um, and, you know, super excited, um, you know, we talked about the phasing before and the film studio, um, having seen how Bumblebee was filmed on Mare Island and how there was like 500 people every single night for that filming. Um, I understand the, uh, the, the site activation that creates and um, uh, the activity that that creates, the draw that it is, um, super exciting. And as far as maker spaces, um, you know, we're seeing some success with that out on Mare Island right now um, with uh, the, the Mare Island Brewing Company and also with, um, they have uh, just signed an agreement with um, a glass studio that's going to be, you know, creating their art there on site and also selling it um, to, to the public as well. So you have those kind of uses already happening in town and, um, and I think that they will be popular. So I'm excited to see that. Um, it'll be interesting to see we have a housing development right now um, over the final phase of Waterstone um, that's uh, under 200 homes, but that's coming out next year, correct? So it's like 184, I'm looking at Christina over there. 162. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the prices that those go for, um, uh, you know, as we're looking at, of course, that single family detached, but, um, you know, it does uh, inform on the market pricing. So thank you. Appreciate this. Mm -hmm. Mayor McConnell. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> um, if you could just walk me through the types of brokers you, you had conversations with, were they mostly housing, residential, commercial? Industrial. Just make sure none of them are here. Is there? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, and you get an idea of maybe seventy-five percent nice. uh, housing. Or what was no. it? No, we. Uh, I didn't speak to one residential broker. Okay, we, so we, we've spoken to all of the top uh, commercial brokers, industrial brokers, retail brokers, hospitality brokers. Yeah. Let me let me be clear on that. In 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 in. Um, Real estate residential broker is a single family residential broker. It, uh, multifamily is considered a commercial broker. Yeah. So we spoke to commercial brokers for residential product, but we did not speak to single family broker. Okay, right. thank you for that yeah. clarification. Um, if you were going to pick and choose which type of building to put up first, what would you put up first? Uh, Notwithstanding numbers? No, in, in the real world economic marketplace of today. Yeah. I think it'll be driven between now and the time we uh, get the plans approved. And there's going to be groups once we go out to market that are ready, <clears throat> hopefully ready based on the location to uh, commit to the site. And it's going to be hopefully some of these makerspace groups and maybe some a studio group that we're talking to. Um, and that's kind of we we would hope that we would get some deals done in the uh, in the meantime. And could you uh, define for me a little better what the uh, the groups specifically would be operating? Are they going to operate a 
a maker retail shop? Are they going to be a housing? Are they going to be a professional office? What do you see as coming out first? Honestly, probably not office. I think there's a lot of uncertainty in the office market, so that's unlikely. Probably not residential, given the numbers and, and that there's really not much going on on the site. Um, it could be, it will probably be some of the, the maker users to activate the site. It could be one of these studio users that wants a, a new construction build because it's very hard to reuse um, older buildings for that purpose. Okay, and maker users would be things like the brew pub, the specialized ice cream shop, um, a, maybe a printmaker, a framer. What else would be in that group? Uh, handmade bicycles, we've seen that before. We've seen uh, handmade backpacks or travel bags, different stuff like that. Um, just uh, craft craft artisan products. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. We, we, there just there's there's a couple oh, of opportunities. Po possibly some. Uh, uh, we've spoken to some wineries also that want to do stuff potentially on the site. So uh, stuff like that where it's craft. Artisan type, yeah. All right, and um, you touched on entertainment, and I, I previously talked about my perception of a need for a large performance entertainment venue. How do you see such a idea playing into this development? Yeah, no. Um, uh, uh, we're going to leverage off the off the brand of the of the fairgrounds. It's known as the fairgrounds. Uh, we have six flags across the street. Uh, we're planning on bringing in uh, some of the studios here. So, you know, just with those three things, uh, the mind kind of lends itself to this being an entertainment site. Um, then, if you add on to that that there uh, there isn't there aren't options um, uh, in this area for any kind of real entertainment for concerts and lectures and and kind of big gatherings, right? So we think that there is a great opportunity, one, to, to accommodate the needs of the fair, which we think are, are a great benefit, not only to the community, but to, our, to, to the site as well, uh, and then, then to, to leverage off that, to have year-round concerts, year-round events, uh, whether they be, be sporting events, uh, you know, again, lectures, uh, uh, large gatherings. Um, the other thing is about that is that once we, what, once we get that going, we know that that is gonna expedite our need likely for, for the hotel component for two reasons. One, the rooms, right? People are going to want to say, oh, I go up there, but there, there's really no place. And that will necessitate uh, the need to expedite the, the hotel. Again, notwithstanding numbers, there's going to be, we think, a demand to have those rooms, which expands our function space. Mm -hmm. So you, you begin to kind of create this area that says, well, you know, this, this you know, venue, this field house that, that we have planned, uh, can accommodate, um, you know, whatever it is, 10,000 square foot or 50,000 square foot of floor space for a certain venue, but it's mm -hmm. also got breakout space in the hotel, and so it begins to sort of leverage off of it. And they've got a main street that they can shut down to have outdoor events, and they've got studio space that can expand into sort of, um, you know, additional areas. So it all begins to work with each mm -hmm. other. Um, and, and so, you know, again, it's, it's how we, it's how we, Kind of unfold the plan mm -hmm. um, that's going to going to be going to be important. Uh, and you're just describing basically an urban and suburban type of activity. Mm -hmm. The county fair is predominantly agriculturally yeah. oriented, and I know that's of significant interest to many of the people in this county. How do you see the fair itself fitting into this development process? Um, I think we're. We're more excited about that than probably a lot of people, you know, that are even close to, to it. I think we see the opportunity um, that that uh, um, that that there is re related to the fair. So, you know, again, I think we can kind of use the premise of kind of the agricultural, um, you know, legacy of the Solano County Fair and, and fairs in general, and we can use that to our advantage. But we're working now with the fair, having discussions with them about mm -hmm. defining what the fair of the future is. And we, we're excited. We have some great ideas. Mm -hmm. So we're going to listen. We're going to get in a room and talk. And mm -hmm. then we're going to lend our ideas. And just to give you kind of a hint, some of those ideas might be, you know, 
um, more corporate driven, right? Wouldn't it be great if we can get some of our Silicon Valley companies to kind of do a release at the county fair, um, introduce products at the county fair, you know, what's coming? So uh, we, we see just the, some great opportunities with the fair. Uh, we want to use it to our advantage. We want it to have kind of this profile. And then, by the way, also from kind of a visceral, more aesthetic point of view, we think that there's opportunities to, uh, to use the brand. So you're envisioning more of a <clears throat> partnership type of activity with what is currently recognized as being the fair district? Yeah. And because they would retain, I guess, operation and control over some of the acreage, as I understand it, right? Yeah. And then you would partner with them to lease it out or to promote events or put on events? Not sure. Okay, so that's one of those <laughs> things you're talking about. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, just in your estimate, Vallejo does not seem to be attracting the type of growth uh, that the other parts of the county and indeed the Bay Area and especially the state is attractive. And why do you think that is? I think it's because you have opportunities um, that have not yet been exploited. I think that you, at the heart and soul, when I, when I drive, you know, I'm from L.A. Mm -hmm. You know, Justin lives in Truckee and he spends a lot of time in L.A. So when I tell people about the site, hey, where is that site? I say, you know where the Six Flags is when you're going to Napa? Oh, yeah. You know that big piece of land next to it? Yeah, what is it? That's the site. Mm -hmm. So people from L.A. know the site, right? Because they're on the way up to Napa, and there's this kind of iconic thing called Six Flags that says that's the marquee. That's where it is. It's the, it's, I transition. I go to the highway there. Yeah, I, when I'm going up to Sacramento, I, I drive past that, right? So that's kind of like the heart and soul of Vallejo, and you drive right through it. Mm -hmm. And off to the right, you know, it's a nice neighborhood. But what is in Vallejo? If, you, if I were to ask you, Mayor McConnell, to define what Vallejo is for me, mm -hmm. you don't have to do it now, but I'd love to hear that. What's your definition of what Vallejo is? And, 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 and I think from our perspective, you know, sometimes we get kind of, you know, I guess critiqued for being out of the area, right? Through my career, you know, you come in from out of the area, and you're gonna you're gonna kind of tell us what we should do. I, I think that that's a benefit. Often, mm -hmm. I think that we come in with no preconceived notions. Mm -hmm. We don't know. No history. We don't know what's happened. I don't want to know what's happened. All I know is a lot of people drive pot past this. The weather's great. The people's great. There's an incredible ethnic diversity, which is a massive advantage to us. It's south of Napa, one of the most beautiful places in the world. North of San Francisco, which if you speak to our VC friends, call it the center of the world, what's going on? I don't know. I don't care. We're going to make sure that we make this site something when people drive by, they don't say, did you see Six Flags? They say, you got to get off the highway, you got to go to the fairgrounds, and you got to check this place out. I ate Filipino food. I got a custom-made bicycle. I walked down a main street, and it reminded me of when I was a kid, right? Mm -hmm. I saw a bunch of people, they lived there, and then they rode their bicycles down to the apartments that they, that they live in south of the site. It becomes iconic. So, you know, that's why it's important that we work together, that we understand your objectives, uh, but that you let us come at it from, with, a, with a fresh, almost naive perspective um, and tell you what we think it could be and what, what we feel like the opportunities are. It's gonna be, it's gonna be work, but I think, um, you know, we're, again, what can I say? We're excited about it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that. I'd be more than happy to sit down with you one-on-one <laughs> -on -one at some point in time. And uh, let me see if I had any other questions. Well, what do you th see your uh, next step as being in this process? I mean, I've been on this committee now for a year. It's my third time I've been here. What happens next? Well, we, um, we're working with the county to do this specific plan amendment. Mm -hmm. um, and then that will likely go to the city for uh, approval in the next uh, few weeks, basically. Um, and then we'll be working with the, the city on the county and the city, basically, on, um, on plans to approve it. Okay. Well, I think that answers my concerns. Thank you very much for your time and your information. You Appreciate it greatly. <laughs> yes. Please, Supervisor. You know, the 
when this project first started you know player was still in the shadow of that bankruptcy you know and so you know a lot of us and aaron's one of them that we felt it was really important that there was a northern california iconic project you know something that people would see and would overshadow that and you know, we thought it would be something that uh, both Vallejo and Solano County could be very proud of, and it would be a destination. You know, it would be a place like the Nut Tree used to be. You know, people would say, oh, I'm stopping at the Nut Tree. Not necessarily knew what they were going to do there, but they were stopping there. And that's w what we were hoping this site is going to do. And, uh, you know, I think uh, Vallejo has a lot of great things going on right now. You know, they're becoming our uh, transportation hub, you know, for Solano County. As, I, as we develop our transportation system, we want to feed it into that hub, which is extremely important. They've got the ferry, we've got Soul Trans feeds into BART, and a lot of other advantages. And so, you know, that was part of it, is, is that we really felt it was important. It was an asset that was just sitting there doing nothing, you know. And, you know, the fair has, has been struggling for years, and Unless that changes, you know, I don't see them succeeding for, for very much longer. And, uh, but that, that was the whole intent and uh, was to put something there that sort of puts Vallejo and Solano County on the map. And, that, and that's what I'm hoping you will help us do. And uh, so I'm very encouraged on what I'm seeing. And, uh, you know, so I hope we can just strengthen this partnership and deliver this project. And Alicia, do we have callers on the line that might have questions? Thank you. Callers on the line, if you wish to speak on agenda item number three, please press star six to unmute yourself and state your name if you wish. They are not unmuting themselves. Okay, thank you so much. Um, wow, I mean, this is the, well, every time, you talk, Mike, I get excited about this project. <laughs> you have a great way about um, really painting this picture of a beautiful, exciting place that people are, are like the nut tree are gonna wanna go to, which is kind of one of those things that's floating around my head and one of those uh, question marks and those bubbles is, what are we gonna call this, you know, uh, this place? What is, it, what is the name? And, and I know that's to be de determined at some other date. Um, I appreciate the market overview. I, I feel like you know you you've nailed you've put the nail on the head and or hit the nail on the head in terms of um, really some of the challenges as well as the opportunities. Yeah. And I I think it's interesting when you identified uh, Solano County and, and Vallejo in particular with Napa and and Sonoma and even Marin County. Um, I, you know I I make this comment when asked, uh, you know, what is, where is Solano County? What is Solano County? And we have an identity crisis because we're not necessarily East Bay. We're not necessarily North Bay. We're up in this odd little corner kind of, kind of off to the, to the side. Um, and, you know, are we Bay Area? Well, we are in Vallejo and Benicia, you know, are, or are we the Sacramento Valley? And, you know, that's kind of what's happening here in Fairfield. And as far as you go East, obviously you get closer to that. So, um, you know, really putting a pin in where Solano County is and what Vallejo is, is what this project is gonna do for us. And I think that is, that's important for us, um, particularly those of us who represent our city of Vallejo, uh, which will be all three of us here. Um, and, you know, and we do it with pride and, and, and yes, we know we've had difficult pasts and we know we're the cheapest place in the Bay Area to live and um, we're easily commutable to a lot of different locations. We have access to, you know, however many airports within a matter of an hour or less um, and, you know, entertainment sites and the whole bit. But to have that, those, those amenities here is just amazing, and um, this is an incredible opportunity. And so, you know, our partnership is extremely important, and um, I appreciate your vision, and I appreciate your sharing of your vision, and I think it's something that we can all, I think you've heard from all of us, it's, it's we can grab onto it. Um, and right now, as far as I can tell, I don't serve on the city council, but I think we're moving the farthest to, a, you know, actually a, 
a quicker dig in the dirt uh, to get started on a project that is going to benefit the city of Vallejo um, most definitely. And um, certainly, you know, we have, what, 250,000 cars that travel on Highway 80 every single day. Yeah. And for the longest time, we were looking at a grandstand and a thousand house, uh, horse barns. And, you know, now it's a piece of dirt, you know, you don't really see it. You kind of got a straight shot to Six Flags. But, you know, to see something new and shiny and, you know, what is that? You know, let's go check it out. Um, hopefully we can divert many, many cars off of, out of that 250,000 onto our site. So um, really appreciate that. So we'll move on um, to item number four, the specific plan amendment status. So just, we'll just, uh, again, this is Nancy Houston. I know Mike was going to cover this as well. So, but basically we're on, we're hopeful um, to move forward on bringing forward to the city a specific plan um, amendment. Uh, we have the current specific plan that was approved in 2013, June of 2013. So that is the document that we're bringing forward some text changes to, and Mike Linden Lobb is working on that. We're also at the county, Alan Calder, is assisting us looking at that as well as Bill Emlin. I, my other, the other assistant county administrator is also assisting in that as well as Tom Sinclair here. So we are looking, I would call it a team package that we're working on and they'll be coming forward to the city of Vallejo for uh, review. And as you know, uh, the Board of Supervisors has approved uh, paying for a planner and actually Brian is in the audience today um, and Brian is the planner that's going to be hired by the city of Vallejo to actually work on their side of the review of the specific plan. So you're looking at a team effort to do that. It is our hope that that process will go very expeditiously so that we can bring forward then um, also the environmental review work and again get all the necessary work done to begin the project to construct. So, um, you know, again, Christina is here, she's, and I apologize, Christina, your official title, but she's the planning manager for the city of Vallejo, and she is here as well to talk about the city side, and we're actually kind of morphing into the other item, but that's sort of the high-level review of what's going on with the mechanics of it, so. Okay. So, hello, supervisors, uh, Mayor McConnell, Council Member Dew, nice to see all of you again. Uh, Christina Ratcliffe, I'm Interim Planning and Development Services Director for the city of Vallejo. Also here today is Emmy Tirio, who is the project manager for this project. Um, and I know that Brian Millar, who is going to be the contract planner, is sitting behind me. Um, just wanted to do a call out to that. It was uh, we, it has been a very collaborative process between the county. Really excited about this project. It's it's amazing to think of that high level, uh, wonderful development going on. Um, I think we all agreed that Brian was a great choice. Um, every, it's, it's one of those synchronistic things that every planner in the Bay Area is about six degrees removed from each other. So I think we've all worked with Brian before and we all know that he's very capable and uh, was a is a great choice for pushing the project forward as quickly as possible. Um, City has been very proactive in collaborating with the county. Um, back in April, we started you know, saying, hey, let's get together, let's have regular meetings. In September, we started doing that. And this is not just, you know, hey, we'll send a planner to a meeting. This involves the city manager's office, the city attorney's office, the economic development division, planning, building. Everybody's at the table for the city with this to um, uh, answer questions and to push this forward. That being said, and I know that um, Supervisor Sparing and Supervisor Hannigan have um, wanted to, uh, have asked the mayor to, uh, in a letter to um, encourage the city staff to shorten the timeline, our anticipated timeline for processing this. Um, I would love to do it. I would love to tell you, hey, we'll do it in six months. And I have to speak the truth, and I do not know that we can do that. Here is why I don't know that we can do that. Um, I don't have a full project description. I don't know what phase one is. The CEQA consultant for the county does not know what the project description is. So that being said, CEQA really drives a timeline. If this is a negative declaration, it's a totally different timeline than if it's an environmental impact report or a mitigated negative declaration with an initial study. 
we just don't know. It hasn't been submitted yet. We don't have anything to go on. Um, from a practical point of view, and I've been a planner for 30 plus years, um, a, a project of this size, and I mean no disrespect to uh, the team submitting it, when they submit it, it's not going to be complete. It's not going to be perfect. There are things that are going to ha need to be hammered out. So I don't think that even when they submit it, and we've been told, you know, first or second week in January uh, to expect a submittal, that it's going to be the absolute perfect submittal, that we're going to have all the information, and that we're going to be able to do a sequel analysis really quickly and be done with it. We just don't know that from a practical perspective. Um, the timeline we have given the county is um, a year and a half to two years for a specific plan amendment. Um, that is a timeline that the county gave us when we called them and said, hey, how long is it going to take for a specific plan amendment? That is the timeline that any jurisdiction is going to give you based on the information that we have. Now, if everything is perfect, if everything goes in line, you know, if there's minor revisions, then great. If it's less than if it's less than a year and a half, I'm very happy to do that. I want it to work for the city of Vallejo. Um, I think it's a great project. I will also say that I think the waterfront, Mayor Island, downtown Vallejo are also amazing projects and identify the city very well as well. So I don't want to like put all our eggs in one basket here and say this is this is the sole end all and be all. We want to work with the county. We are working with the county actively. That's why I'm here. That's why Emmy's here. That's why um, we're we're talking together every uh, every other week um, to make this go forward. Um, but a year and a half to two years, based on the information we have now, is what we've got. So I just wanted to let you know that and add that to the timeline. I know that everybody's anxious for it to move forward faster. I couldn't be happier if it was, was to move forward faster. But I don't want to give you false hopes and, and then be caught short. So, and if you have any questions, happy to answer that. Yeah. Supervisor Sparing. Extremely disappointing what you've said. You know, it, uh, okay. I was certainly hoping to hear you say that we will do everything we can. And, you know, I think seven months is very reasonable. It, uh, and you know, I want to be respectful, but you know, Vallejo has a reputation of very difficult to get anything done and get anything through. I think you know that. And this is an example of why. I think the staff just gets dug in on these traditional timelines and we're hiring someone to do it. Our staff believes this can be done in seven, eight months. And you're not giving me a good reason why you can't. And, and you know, at some point, Vallejo's got to say, this project is important to us. I don't hear you or anybody saying that. Somebody's got to say it's important. We're going to help facilitate it. We're going to get it through. Millions of dollars have been spent up to this point. You got a developer that, thank God we have them. I mean, they're a good developer. But Christina, I think that you've got to be a, a little bit more aggressive and try and help us get this thing through, you know, instead of just thinking of your traditional, well, it's going to take a year and a half. Well, we're asking you to cut that down. And we're willing mm -hmm. to pay for a, a planner. And I'll tell you, if you're not going to do it sooner, I don't want to pay for the planner. I'll tell you right now, just take your year and a half. It's, it's absolutely irresponsible for us to pay for somebody to facilitate this thing, accelerate it, and then you tell us it's going to take a year and a half anyway. So Why would we do Spare, that? I'm, I'm sorry. I need to say, I, I just said we want the, the project to go forward. We're committed for the project to go forward. We've got all city resources pushing for this project to go forward. We are understaffed in the planning division. Wonderful that Brian is going to be a planner. I have great faith in his ability. I cannot change CEQA. The California Environmental Quality Act let, let, moves like this our time staff frame. To respond if, to that. Can our staff respond to that? So, so Talk just, about that, that very issue. Well, I'm going to let Alan talk about the CEQA issue, but just, just from behind the scenes, the package for the county, I'm going to call it the team package. It's like a football game. We're working together as a group. IRG and the county will be submitting a package to the city of Vallejo. So we have right. experts on the county staff side that's experts in CEQA. So when we, when we provide something to the city of Vallejo, it won't be incomplete. I just want to point that out to you. Okay? So there'll be questions. 
everything, there's always questions, but we'll send something through and then we'll work with the city of Vallejo if they have any questions. So the whole idea is the whole premise of this project is the city and the county are partners on this project. We selected our developer together and we're gonna work together on the development of the site. So timeline is, this is why we wanna go faster because we wanna engage and keep our developer engaged. It's very, it's very timely, it's very expensive to continue the process. So it's important for the city of Vallejo to work with us hand in hand. I do believe they can, and I guess they gotta trust us a little bit more is all I'll say. So maybe Ellen, you can kind of talk about what your role is to help with the package. I think that would be helpful. And Alan Calder actually is our planning manager from our resource department. And well, uh, before Alan speaks, actually, I, I just wanna clarify, I have a clarifying question, Christina. I think what sure. I heard you say is, as of today, the information you have mm -hmm. isn't sufficient enough to give a different timeline right. than the six or 12 months, and that once the documents are received in January, you would have an opportunity to review those documents and advise the county and the developer as to what the timeline, a further refinement, if you will, of the timeline. Is that what certainly, I heard you say? Certainly that is true. At this present time, yeah. I don't know what infrastructure is proposed. I don't know what square footage of what type of use is proposed. Commercial, industrial, housing. There's a water feature. There's um, now you're, many well, let me let me just let me just kind of pause you there. That's okay. Um, so uh, it, it, you're referring to what is different from the specific plan that was adopted in 2013. Correct. So you 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 have reviewed the specific plan that was adopted in 2013. Correct. I don't know what the amendment consists of. I okay. Know, I know ballpark. Right. Um, right. But right. I don't know the specifics. What are the of details the within is. that specific plan? That's correct. As it relates to the plan put forward by IRG. Correct. I don't know the specifics of right. their plan. We've talked to. Um, we've we've certainly had conversations and meetings, but mm. it's all been very fifty thousand feet. Yeah. Um, N not where the rubber meets the road as far as what needs to be analyzed. What's the for sure, for sure, for sure, right? That. Yeah, what's landing yes. on the site. Exactly, and okay. it would be irresponsible of me to um, give no, you I, a, yeah, a, a time frame when I don't have that information. Yeah, I mean, and, and I, you know, I am encouraged by um, Ms. Houston's comment that, you know, the CEQA the, the document or the, the details you're gonna get in this package that will involve the county and mm -hmm. IRG, um, will be complete. Obviously there'll be questions because there always are, but uh, that mm -hmm. will then be able to give you an opportunity to, to tighten up the timeline and give a more realistic timeline versus this fuzzy, because we don't know what's all landing, but when you get that document, you'll know what's landing and, and what you'll need to look at and what the differences are gonna be. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Alan. Great, thank you, um, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Um, Alan Calder, Planning Manager. So yes, uh, much has been said about the schedule here. So um, you know, as we all know, the city and the county seek an expedited s schedule that's mutually beneficial to both the county and the city. And as such, we did um, engage Brian Millar to expedite the specific plan application, uh, uh, addend um, specific plan addendum application on on the behalf of both our entities. So that that is our collective goal to move that along. And as um, Nancy mentioned we are engaging with IRG now on the project narrative uh, as well as identifying the phasing. So those products will be to the city of Vallejo in short order to help give them some confidence with regards to the permitting and um, processing of that application. Um, and, and to Nancy's point of trust, um, um, we have initial indications from our environmental consultant that, that there may be an addendum afoot, uh, not another EIR process. Um, so that's a much more expedited process than an EIR. We have an adopted EIR already from 2013. Much work has gone into it, um, and, and much resources have been expended. Um, I, I think, you know, to Brian's um, con uh, proposal, there, there is reality about um, a projection of seven months. That is the projected timeline for this processing. It does depend on a number of things. Um, you know, the complete application, the findings from CEQA, uh, the result of the technical studies, 
um, review timelines, draft project documents. Um, there, the, you know, there's there are a number of variables in there, but our goal, our collective goal, should be that seven month time frame, and that's what we are all working towards. Thank you, Ellen, um, Mayor McCall. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I wanted to respond to several of the comments that were made by various people, including uh, Supervisor Spearing. And just as a bit of background, I have the unique position of having approved the specific plan for Mare Island on the Planning Commission and also have approved uh, at, as a council member, uh, having served eight years on the Planning Commission and been the liaison of the, to the Planning Commission for six of my eight years on the council. Um, we had a discussion about how quickly our planning and building department can move. The reality is, is that we are not only underfunded, but understaffed. And one of the things I, I am advocating in our mid-year budget adjustment is that for once we finally put some resources into those departments. For years and years and years, we've had to put our resources into police and fire. And as a consequence, planning and building have extremely deteriorated and suffered. And I mean suffered. If that budget change could be made mid-year, I'm hoping it will in January, I think we'll be able to step up to the plate a little bit better. But along the way, there are some things that I think that need to be attended to. Um, our planning commission needs to start receiving briefings on this project. Because even though I've done the specific plan and I've read about this all along, I'm finding more about this proposal in the three sessions I've been here than in the years before. And if you bring this to a planning commission, who naturally will have questions, and they're not adequately briefed along the way, that's going to be a big problem. Concurrently with that is we have a very vocal and outspoken public. And we need to start getting some public information reports going out to the citizens of Vallejo on this project. I subscribe to the Daily Republic because my local paper doesn't report on what's going on up here. And I keep better informed through that public than I do through that paper than I do through my own. But the reality is, is the consequences is because Vallejo is oriented towards the Bay Area, we don't find out what's going on in Sacramento and Fairfield the way we need to. So when you come along with this plan that's been in the process for years, and all of a sudden unroll it to an unheard of before public, it's like, whoa, what happened? And you know, they need a little bit of time to catch up. So we need to educate them in this process as we move along. I would even like to see the uh, Planning Commission liaison starting to come uh, to these meetings just to be briefed on it, if that's possible. Um, well, uh, yeah, but they also uh, have full-time jobs. Okay. So uh, those are some of the consequences I see. And uh, believe me, if, if we have the, the financial ability and the staff capacity to step up to the plate, we will do so. But ultimately, the approval falls to the city of Vallejo as the lead agency. And we will have to do our due diligence because we're, con we're acutely aware of what happens if we do not. And so we'll ask your not only indulgence, but your involvement and your explanations. It might not even be a bad idea to start having a public workshop in Vallejo. Because if you spring this on the citizens of Vallejo, you're going to get a pushback that you won't appreciate. Uh, one of the comments that many city managers have made is when they come to Vallejo, they are astonished as to the awareness and the involvement and more especially the articulation of the citizens on projects. It's unparalleled in other communities. So don't underestimate how the city and the community will react to this. If they love this idea, and you're the ones who are going to have to sell it, they'll back you all the way. But that's a totally essential requirement, believe me. So thank you for my for listening to me. Thank you, Mayor McConnell. And I um, agree. You also you have an online newspaper, the Vallejo Weekly, <laughs> that you could participate in in terms of sharing information about the meetings that are happening. These are public meetings. You can view them on Zoom. I understand they happen during the workday, and workshops are a great um, suggestion. And I, you know, I think. Mike would shine in a workshop with <laughs> the citizenry um, with a little armor. But uh, <laughs> I think it's a great idea <laughs> to, br to bring in the Planning Commission and certainly the, the uh, 
those who are interested. I mean, there's plenty of ways that the city has, has bypassed newspapers to uh, share information that's happening in the city. And this is um, a, a city project as well as a county project. And, uh, you know, you've got, you've got avenues to do that. I agree with you. They don't get the information. That's why I um, subscribe to the Daily Republic because, you know, fortunately, Todd Hansen, the reporter from the Daily Republic that covers our meetings, including this one, uh, is, you know, pretty accurate. And um, he reports on a regular basis what happens at our, our board meetings. Uh, but I don't know how to change that newspaper information other than to utilize your own avenues. I've requested that here at the county, we have a, a newsletter that um, those who reside in our county or anybody could access and or receive information on, but we don't have that yet. Uh, and actually, I use Blair Weekly as an example of how it's done pretty well. So I appreciate that. Supervisor Dean, did you have a comment? I just got promoted. Thank you. Supervisor? <laughs> I got emoted. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> uh -huh. So um, I just have a question first and then comments. Um, so let's say hypothetically, January, we get the description, everything. It's an addendum, not a full specific plan amendment. We're able to, um, and it's a complete package, um, and we're able to do a negative declaration. What would that timeline look like? That's really, <laughs> there were so many ifs in that question. Yes, I know. That I really don't feel comfortable answering that. Okay. Um, so if it's a specific plan amendment, it's going to be a specific plan amendment. Um, what Alan said was it might be an, an amendment to the EIR. I wasn't aware of that. We didn't know what it was because we don't have a project description um, and we don't know the CEQA process. But I need to look at that. We all need to look at that. The departments need to look at that. Um, the, the agencies that are related to that need to look at that and determine what the process is and what the public process is as well. And I think uh, both the mayor and uh, Supervisor Hennigan mentioned uh, public involvement. I think that, and we have talked about it also um, in our meetings, we need a lot of public workshops. We need some folks, we need folks to know what is going on, you know, as far as what specifically is going on, what square footage we're talking about. So I. I can't, I, I don't feel comfortable answering that question now. What I can say is that we have Brian as a dedicated planner to push this through. Mm -hmm. If everything is clear and wonderful, then we will get it done absolutely as quickly as we can under the law and making sure that all city and state requirements are met. Yeah. Okay, and um, I appreciate that. I do, um, you know, I've been involved in this project since 2009, so not the full 20 years, but um, certainly I have been involved for quite some time. And um, just as a side note, I did formally request to be the council liaison to the planning commission for next year, so um, I could already be involved if that uh, request was made. Um, but, um, I, I do think we do need to have more public engagement. Um, we used to have a lot. Uh, we used to have meetings, uh, Solano, not when, as when, since I've been on the implementation committee, but at one point there were meetings at the fairgrounds. Um, Supervisor Sparing, I remember you and former Mayor Davis um, and former council member Golms um, at those meetings um, in Vallejo. And so, um, I think it would be good to perhaps consider doing that once again, rotating the meetings periodically so that we do get that engagement from the community and they do feel like they're being brought along on this project. Um, but I do have to say that I don't see a ton of changes from what's being proposed in the vision from what's already been approved. So I would be hopeful that we could move this forward sooner than later. We do have a lot of projects and I know mm -hmm. the pipeline is, you know, tight um, as far as resources to handle everything that's coming through. Um, but economic development, we know, is our top priority. If we're going to be able to do everything else that we want to do, economic development has to be front and center on all of our projects. And, um, and I 
have already had this conversation with the mayor that I absolutely agree we need to uh, allocate more resources towards our planning and building um, and economic development departments. I've actually been saying that for a very long time in terms of, uh, you know, when I first got elected, we only had one staff member in the whole economic development department. And that has changed, thankfully, but we're still not where we need to be. So um, I absolutely will support that effort. And I hope that, um, you know, I've heard this comment about trust between the two jurisdictions uh, many times, and I, I don't agree with it. I don't feel that that is accurate. I think that um, um, when I see the efforts of, of the city staff and of the county staff, we're all working really hard to make this come forward and to then make these uh, comments and, and accusations, it's not fair. It, that will cause distrust in and of itself. And so um, we definitely want this to move forward post haste and we want to have um, everything be golden in January when it's submitted and I hope that it is. Um, and, and I know that my staff will do the best that it can to move this forward with all haste. Um, because it is very exciting, and we know that this is it's desperately needed for our community. So, thank you. Aaron, I, I just want, uh, Christina, I, I appreciate those last comments you made. I wish you would have started off that way, <laughs> you know, saying that we will try and, and do it in, in a shorter time frame, but these are some of the factors, you know, and, uh, you know, the way it was presented, I, I'm, and you're probably hearing a lot of frustration, you know, both the city and the county. We've spent a lot of time, a lot of money. You know, this plan has been, you know, I think publicly exposed in Vallejo many, many times. Uh, but I'm hearing we may have two parallel tracks now. One is this public outreach, which I think is extremely important, and I appreciate the mayor bringing that up. And that ought to be planned and really kind of separate from this specific plan process, you know, that we start exposing the public to it, and as we get information to you, it starts getting exposed to the public. But, it, you know, I, I just really hope that the, the Vallejo staff understands the importance of the time. I mean, the developer will tell you, time is money. These, th this opportunity may not happen again in the lifetime of a lot of us in this room. You may have a vacant lot there for your career. And, and we have to take advantage of those opportunities when they come. And staff's got to be aggressive and, you know, I mean, you got to do it legally and you got you to do it right, but there's times that you can accelerate and, and put a little more focus on it and, and move it along. And I'm just hoping the staff will do that. And, you know, that's our expectation. And, you know, I, I want to work with you. So I apologize if I said anything that's offended you, but I, that just, that opening comment just, uh, was very disturbing to me, just because saying a year and a half to two years, because it, it seems like you were setting the stage for that to happen. And so, uh, but I, I just want to tell you, our staff and, and our board of supervisors, and I mean all five of them, Mitch, I don't know, has weighed in on this yet, but we are solidly behind making this project a reality. And, and you know, we've invested a lot of money and a lot of time we put a lot of money in this project up front, clearing it, you know, and, and preparing it for development. And, and you know, the city has to recognize that, that we've done that and, you know, to help us and you develop this site as quickly as possible. And so I, I certainly hope that is the case. And, uh, you know, if we can help with the public outreach, you know, you can count on us doing it. But the, the other question I do want to ask, just for clarity, what are we actually asking for changes in this specific plan? I mean, it, is it? that complicated, I'd like our staff to answer that question. What, what is it we're, that you're seeing is gonna be the change? I'm gonna let Alan answer that question. Um, Supervisor Spearing, uh, yeah, I, I'd, uh, I'd add that the, the largest change really is in the number of housing units. Uh, initially there was 50 units uh, proposed and now there's 500 units proposed. And so there is a, um, you know, increase in those unit types. Yeah, no, that's, that's significant. You know, um, but um, initial indications from a traffic analysis through Fear and Peers is that the, the adjacent roadways are, are capable of handling that additional traffic. 
Um, there's also a, a very interesting STA project underway on the Fairgrounds Drive, which is a divergent diamond, if anybody's seen that. It's very yeah. interesting. I think people will get off the freeway just to see that alone. <laughs> I've been pushing that for, mainly because of this project. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a terrific complement um, to the project. I think it will be a, actually a, an area of interest as well to see that, because there's only a three or four of them around the country. Um, so, um, but but you know, there's a there's a um, a recombination of use types, but largely the zoning uh, uh, is similar in um, uh, in retail um, development and and many of the items that Mike and Justin just outlaid to you those those types of uses and they're and they're in kin and in keeping with the original vision of the uh, of the Solano 360 project. Presentation last night was very good, and it just shows what else is on your plate. <laughs> so, oh, that's just a tiny bit. <laughs> no, I, I understand. Believe so, me, I understand that. Thank you, and I apologize if there was uh, if I miscommunicated that. You know, we definitely want to move this project forward, and Brian, you know, as the project planner, will will be able to do that. Okay, that's a lot of it. Yeah, I, I and and Aaron and I felt that we needed to engage the city council that. You know, you, you really need to oversee this and try and keep it on schedule and you know, keep the staff focused. And so hopefully, I'm, I'm sure the mayor's going to do with his comments. Thank you. I, I do have a public speaker, um, Fidel Chavez. Oh. How's everybody doing, Fidel Chavez? I actually wasn't going to come up and speak today, but um, like Aaron Hannigan said, there was a lot of information uh, being uh, spewed out. And um, being a longtime resident here of Fairfield and Solano County, you know, today you guys bring forth growth, right? Um, not only for the city of Vallejo, but for the county of Solano. And I hear, and I'm, and I'm not just talking on this item, it's kind of like an overall item that I'm speaking on. Sometimes it's, in my perspective, and I'm a field representative of the Carpenters Union. Our office is located right there in Vallejo. The view is to bring growth to Solano County, but sometimes it's, it's mis misconstrued is the people of Solano County, what is given to them? So, I ask just for a second for the board and the developer, think of that. Commitment. You guys are talking about commitment. The developer, what are you committing to? Yes, you're committing to the project. Board, what are you committing to? You're committing to the city. You're committing to the individuals like myself and others that live here and that want the same thing everybody in this room wants, is an opportunity. An opportunity to grow, an opportunity to make a livable wage. It's an opportunity. So I ask you today, and this is just me just hearing everything today and where I stand and where I've been and where I am today, is I want the city to, to commit to this project, but also commit to the citizens. Commit to responsible general contractors at the beginning stages of construction. Not only that, great paying jobs, health care, apprenticeship programs, joint apprenticeship programs that give growth, job opportunities, not short term, long term. Local hire. So I'm just talking about the beginning. This is just the beginning. Let's talk mid, future, right? Who's gonna be doing those? That could be done by us here locally, by individuals that live here, that spend here, that give everything to this community. Not just Vallejo, not just Fairfield, but everybody that lives in the, in the county. And I just want to leave you with those words, and um, thank you for your time. 
I just, I want to be the, and, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Carpenters Union, but we want to be involved. We really do. I think there's things that we need to think outside of the box. We could get language inside. Um, I know general plan. We get some language inside that general plan that we could follow. That way, not just if years go by, we, we could commit to that long term. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Fidel, thank you for coming. I know you've been to pretty much every one of our meetings, and you've been silent in the back rows, and I really appreciate that you spoke today. Thank you. Uh, Mayor McConnell. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just have a request of the county and of the city staff. Uh, I, I allude to the need to bring the public along in this process. And I would like to find a way to maybe have at one of our meetings, maybe in conjunction with our planning commission, held in Vallejo, where we do have television capacity, and a lot of people will watch it, especially if we publicize it. And I'm not saying which meeting. I think that's something that the chair and the city staff could work out. But I think there does need to be a public meeting, and probably earlier rather than later. And to the applicants, you guys are going to need to be there. You're going to need to be able to make your case. So there'll be a lot writing on it. Thank you. Well, to that, I don't know that it's a make your case. I think it's to share the project. You know, that we're at the point to, you know, have a conversation around and, you know, when those dates might be that we would sunshine the project itself. I think public um, input or getting the pub giving the public an opportunity to view the project is going to be really important. Um, and, you know, I, I agree support is, is, is very good. I also think that you know, we're, we're sharing the hard work. We're sharing the fruits of, our, of the labor of, of our developer, the, the, the labor of our staffs in terms of creating a specific plan. The work that all of us have done over the years in supporting the project and, you know, going through negotiations, and I see Tom here. I mean, we've all, we've all worked hard on this project, and, and, you know, going out to the public is sharing, you know, instead of having this piece of dirt right off the freeway, we're going to have this beautiful opportunity for jobs, for, uh, for shopping, for making something, for eating something different than what you're used to, for you know, um, outside entertainment, move a, a new pl different place to live. I mean, I think there's so much that's going to happen there that um, I'm very confident that the public will um, be excited about what it is. I, and and I, as far as I can tell, this would be the um, possibly the, the first development of all those that are in the pipeline where we would be able to have those types of conversations around, you know, we're, we're kind of at that finish line before the putting the shovel in the dirt, and that's the goal. So um, that's very exciting. Council Member Dew. Thank you, Supervisor Hannigan. And I would say that um, I think it would give the community an opportunity to be your cheerleaders, right? I mean, like this is so amazing and so exciting and to um, really get the community engaged is gonna give them that opportunity to be excited about what's coming too. And um, on that note, um, certainly like our tourism board, Visit Vallejo, I think it would be um, you know, a really great idea to reach out to them. We actually have a board meeting and a holiday party this afternoon at Savage and Cook on Mare Island. If y'all are around, it's open to everyone. So um, <laughs> I certainly will be sharing and bringing all of this information back to Visit Vallejo today because I am the council liaison to that board. And, um, and we have uh, uh, Mike Iocomides, who's also on that board here with us today and he'll, I'm sure, be sharing um, as well the excitement that this is. Um, so uh, I look forward to seeing more community engagement and having the community be excited about this opportunity. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. We are on to, I guess, next meeting date, Nancy? Yes, that's perfect timing. Um, I'm thinking we, we would um, work on a future date in February of 2022. <laughs> And I know it's too hard to set the date today, so, but um, the, the thought would be with the county would already have submitted with IRG the, the package to the city of Vallejo, so that would be submitted by then, and that we could do an update on that, and then um, potentially come back with some thoughts on a, a public workshop, I guess. That would be a good idea. I've heard that today. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's a fully entitled site already today. So what we bring back, bring forward would be the what could be what are the potential changes to that fully entitled site. I want to make sure everyone understands that. <laughs> so when we talk to the public, start off with that. <laughs> um, and um, it, you know, I think we should get, continue to the momentum of the excitement of the project. So that would be kind of the thought we'd talk about that in February. So if that's okay for this group, we could consider and get everyone's calendar out and look at that date and obviously coordinate with IRG staff and um, our staff. Does that work for you or do you like yeah, to No, totally. Well, I've, I've got a lot happening in, in February with okay. NACO and CSAC, oh, but okay. I'm, I'm sure there, there's, there's, there's a day or a couple hours that can be carved. We definitely want you there. <laughs> I appreciate so. that. Um, I did, you know, to Mayor McConnell's comment around a planning commission, I mean, is would these changes to the specific plan have to be approved by the planning commission or are these uh, adjustments that, um, you know, we just have to fit within the EIR? This would go before the planning commission with a recommendation to the council. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I really appreciate the conversation. This has been good. I think we needed this. It's been very helpful and I want to thank um, my fellow committee members here for being here today, and certainly Justin and Mike uh, for traveling uh, this distance. And Christina, nice to meet you. Emmy, you as well. Um, staff, thank you so much. Tom, appreciate it. You've been quiet today. You got lucky. <laughs> and uh, for Mr. Millard, nice to meet you as well and look forward to working with you on this project going forward. Uh, so with that, I want to thank everybody for being here today and taking the time out of your schedule to be interested in this project. Um, it is a great project for Solano County and for the city of Vallejo, and we're getting closer and closer every mm -hmm. single opportunity we get together. So appreciate it. With that, we are adjourned. Thanks. Thank you.